Let's look at Tudor Gold Corp, a junior pre-production gold mining company in Vancouver, BC. Company overview. So Tudor Gold Corp is a junior resource exploration pre-production gold mining company, and it has three mineral exploration projects, which are strategically positioned next to some of the largest undeveloped gold and copper resources in the world. The three projects of the company includes Treaty Creek, Crown Project and SK North Project and company is has entered into an amended and restated arrangement agreement with Gold Store Metal Corp, which is its wholly owned subsidiary to spin off one of its non-core assets, which is Crown Project. And this will allow Tudor Gold management team to solely focus on the development of the flagship project, which is Treaty Creek and significant exploration program is underway in 2022. This also increases the value of the company as on a standalone basis because sometimes divesting this non-core assets is to the advantage of the company as a whole from a valuation perspective. Let's look at the flagship project Treaty Creek. Tudor acquired 60% interest in Treaty Creek claims in 2016 and the remaining 40% was split between American Creek Resources and Tudor Resources, each holding 20% interest uh, until a production decision is made. So their flagship Treaty Creek property comprises several zones, including Gold Storm, Copper Bell, Eureka, Konkin, Perfect Storm, GR2, AW, SW. So there are several zones. And the initial mineral resource estimate in March of 2021 only included Gold Storm and Copper Bell zone. And the to total mineral resource estimate as of March of 2021 is displayed on this slide to the bottom right corner. The project is located in the Gold Storm Triangle. The Gold Storm Triangle is one of the most important mineral districts in northwestern BC. It's adjacent to Seabridge Golding's KSM property to the southwest, the Bruce Jack property to the southeast, Snowfield Deposit approximately 8 kilometers to the southwest, and of course SK Creek Mine, a past producing mine 12 kilometers to the west. So the project is next to past producing mines as well as immense amount of undeveloped reserves around. The property is accessible by helicopter from Port Town of Stewart, 70 kilometers uh, south of the property, also by a seasonal base at Bob Quinn Lake, and the Treaty Creek Gold Project is 20 kilometers from Highway 37, and it's got access to year-round water from an exploration perspective and power through Northwest Transmission Line. So the drilling season is feasible from mid-May to November in this region, and the closest major towns are Smithers and Terrace in terms of access to workers, food, and accommodation. Mm -hmm. Let's look at 2022 Exploration Program, and the company has embarked on the 2022 Exploration Program and is progressing the program and phase one drilling this summer to better define the limits of 300 Horizon, CS 600 Horizon, and DS5 Horizon within Gold Storm, well beyond what was defined in 2021 mineral resource estimate, and to continue exploration on drilling in other zones, such as Eureka and Call Before Storm, which was not explored before uh, in the mineral, the initial mineral resource estimate of 2021. 30,000 30, meter diamond drilling campaign has been planned, 20,000 meters of it is completed, and on July 12th, just yesterday, Tudor Cold released the first set of drill results, which was quite encouraging, and these results are outside the previously defined resource area as displayed. The results are displayed in the slide, and the sources are from the company's news releases, and management confirmed the discovery of a new zone in the south southern portion of Goldstorm, which adds another dimension to Goldstorm expanding deposit. This is helpful because from a valuation perspective, when we try to determine how much of the inferred resources we're going to include in the calculations, there's more certainty to increase that amount of inferred included in the resource calculation to arrive at valuation of the company. So management and board of the companies. Overall, seven out of nine board members are independent, and members of the management team and board hold roughly about 32% of the outstanding shares. Institutional and active investors hold 52% voting power. And how is this structured? Is Tudor Holding Limited and Walter Storm, as well as Eric Sprott, and a company that he directly controlled, hold 47% of the voting power. And these two people are the largest shareholders that have significant control in the company. 
the public hold 48% voting power. The presence of strong-minded active investors such as Eric Sprott and the company would allow for constructive change in the company during periods of crisis. And 32% insider ownership by the management of board incentivizes managers to think more like owners. And this is to their interest, this is to the advantage of the public investors and retail investors, and their interests would be aligned with the public investors. Overall, the corporate governance of the company is fair, and the numbers that are displayed on this um, slide is from June and July of 2022, but as companies and institutional investors trade in and out, and so this shows these numbers would change uh, on an instantaneous basis. So the company is operating in the gold, gold space, so the gold market and the outlook for the gold market is very important. We know that right now we are in an inflationary and recessionary environment post COVID-19, and that's we are in a bull gold bull gold cycle right now. And we know that commodities generally move in cycles. As we see how macroeconomic drivers are driving the gold prices on this slide, we can see the different correlations that there's negative correlation between gold prices and uh, the tips rate, treasury infinite protected rate. And there is negative correlation between the DXY, which is the dollar index. The stronger the US dollar, generally when the US dollar goes up, gold prices are down. And of course, the, between the money supply, there's positive correlation in the CPI, as well as the amount of supply and demand for uh, the gold itself. So when we look at the distribution of the gold price over the last 20, uh, over the last 10 years, 12 years, since 2010, we can see that the distribution is normal, bog normal, but there are two peaks. One peak is around $1,300, $1,400, and another one is around $1,700. When we're doing evaluation for the commodity companies, we try to separate our view of the commodity market from our view on the company itself. And then we can introduce our view on the commodity into the valuation through, through a concept called Monte Carlo simulations. And in this slide, we have looked at the distribution of the gold price, and we have introduced a bimodal normal distribution with two modes, one at $1,300 and another one at $1,700 um, peak uh, in the, the distribution. And we introduced that gold price distribution into the valuation, as we're seeing at the bottom right corner of the slide. The $1,700 peak is because since the, over the last three years, since COVID-19 hit and during the pandemic, gold are, is a gold was a safe bet for a lot of investors. So gold remained strong during the COVID-19 pandemic. And post-pandemic, inflation hit. And during periods of high unexpected inflation, when inflation comes above target, such as the June inflation data, when it came at 9.1% above the 8.8% uh, forecasted inflation, Gold is the best hedge against unexpected inflation. So the gold market is expected to remain strong for the remaining period, which is a positive for companies like Tudor, Tudor to continue their exploration. Now, when it comes to the valuation of the company, there's several ways to do the valuation. We can do the intrinsic valuation or we can do relative valuation. This company is a pre-production, pre-revenue company. It is possible to do an intrinsic valuation if we know a hypothetical case of if we're building a mine, how much the company is going to produce and what are the costs of front capex and the forecast. But a more practical way to do the valuation is the relative valuation. And to choose the comparable companies, we looked at all of the Canadian company mining pre-revenue exploration development mining companies that have gold as their primary metal and are operating in Canada. And we came up with a list of about 36 companies. And looking at their measured and indicated resource, their inferred resources, the gold equivalent uh, grade, uh, equ equivalent grade of these resources, we can determine the contained metal in terms of gold equivalent in thousands of ounces. We can look at the rock value, which is dollar per ton, and of course the grade equivalent, and last but not least, the EV enterprise value of our resource in terms of Canadian dollar per ounce of gold. In terms of the resource calculation for all of these companies, we included 100% of the MNI and 50% of measured and of inferred resources because inferred resources are not as economically viable as measured and indicated. But 
because we know that Tudor is going through an aggressive exploration program and is expanding its deposits for inclusion of the infrared resources, we included a percentage uh, between 50 to 100 percent for infrared resources, and we gave a distribution for that uh, a percentage of inclusion of infrared resources. It can range anywhere between 50 to 100 percent, and that allows us to get a range of prices. The value that we will we will include in these following slides for these graphs that we're seeing is the expected value, which is the midpoint between 50 and 100% of the uniform distribution that's given to the inferred percentage of inferred resources that will be included in resource calculation at Tudor. As drilling progresses, as the deposit expands, we will include more and more percent, higher percentage of the inferred resources in our resource calculation. Mm -hmm. But for these graphs, we currently really give you 75%, which is the midpoint of the uniform distribution. And of course, the share price will have a distribution given the two distribution that we have used, one for gold price and one for the percentage of inferred resources that is included in the results calculations for Tudor. And based on these numbers, we can see, and these inputs that we have already explained, we can see that Tudor gold has the highest the highest contained metal gold equivalent in 1,000 ounces across all pre-revenue Canadian peers, gold peers in Canada. And Tudor Gold has about 27.72 million ounces of gold equivalent contained metal. It's on a lower, from a, from a great perspective, it's on the lower end uh, compared to other players in the market, but it has the highest contained metal. Same applies to the rock value and EV over resource. From a rock value, because the grade is lower, it falls under a lower, it's falling from a distribution among all the peers, it's on the lower end of the rock value in terms of dollar per ten. But from a, an EV over resource perspective, which is the metric that we're using for valuation from a dollar per ounces, of, of per, per ounces, we can see that it's relative to the peers, it's quite undervalued. And we can determine this by looking at the median EV over resource of dollar per ounces of 25.22, which is at 14, as we see, what it was much lower than uh, what it was with respect to the Canadian, with respect to the peers. So applying the median EV over resource of 25.22, we get to the resources of Tudor, with that 75% of inferred inclusion in uh, the resource calculation for Tudor, we can come up with $419 million value of operating assets. Take from that the value of the options outstanding and the options outstanding are all in the money, about $20 million and net debt, which there's mostly this $8 million of cash company, there's no debt really, it's a junior growth company. And we come up with $2.72, $2.27 cents for the shares. So, which is much higher, which is about 84% higher than what the stock is trading currently in the market. So the stock is significantly undervalued. Now we introduce the distribution for the gold price. We introduce a distribution for uh, the percentage of inclusion, the percentage of the inferred resources that will be included in the resource calculation. And that also gives us a distribution of the target price ranging anywhere from 2.1% to $2.11 to $2.44. And 2.27 falls in between the 50th percentile of the data. And across all of these inputs, the company is undervalued. To learn more about the company itself, and the methods of evaluation and the analysis that's gone into this, visit modelizedinvestments.com and download these type of reports under the basic modelized plan. Thank you.